behavior. What the hell is that? What the actual hell is that? <laughs> Look at that stupid thing, bruh. Come on. Behavior. I want somebody to get you in a room behavior. And I want you to understand the word subtlety. I want you to get in the room and, and somebody make you sit down and watch the ring. I, 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 which is funny because Samara's in the game. I want you to the, the ring goo. I want somebody, I want your entire company to sit down and watch Ringu. And, and understand why Ringu is a classic. And understand why Ringu is scary. It's called subtlety. And you wouldn't know subtlety if it bitch smacked you across the mouth, man. This is the most unsubtle thing I have ever seen in my entire life. This is the killer, guys. Check him out. He likes big butts and he cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny that when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist of little thing in your face, you get sprung. <laughs> the killer be looking kind of dick, though, boy. <laughs> oh, I'm never. I don't know. Do you guys like this? The killer looks like me if I had a fentanyl addiction. Like, come on, bro. I don't know if y'all be liking this shit. I, I think y'all already know how I feel about it. Look at his goofy-ass grin. He looks like a survivor reading the fucking patch notes. That's what he looks like. Oh, looks like they reverted the healing changes again, bro. Ridiculous, bro. The unknown. That's what this guy's called, bro. The unknown. Well, if he's the unknown and I have to go into the unknown to play him, I guess that makes me Queen Elsta because I am going to play the shit out of this piece of fucking garbage. You know what I'm saying? There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your power and put this garbage away. Oh, you know, terrible. Absolute, absolutely. Like, I'm not going to say I'm embarrassed because I really think, I really think a casual will find this scary. Like, a casual gamer, which is who they cater to, is going to look at that and go, Oh my god, scary. He says some weird creepy things as he comes runs around the map, bro. He's kind of weird. He's got that analog horror creepy pasta looking smile, you know? I feel like the average gamer, the average normie will find this scary. Me, however, I'm knee-deep into all the horror, bro. I'm knee-deep into all this shit. To me, this looks like a petulant child trying too hard to make something scary. Daddy, daddy, hurry. I saw something scurry. That's what this is, bro. Again, he looks like me if I got addicted to fentanyl. That's that, like... <laughs> oh, yes, I love fentanyl. Absolutely love it. Go cuckoo for it. Go cuckoo for the shit, bro. Oh, that's the new killer. But even though the new killer is an ugly piece of shit, the survivor, on the other hand, ooh, the survivor. Let's tell, ooh, hey, little mama, how you doing? How we doing, sweetheart? I'd like to take you downtown and show you the city a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I got an extra seat in my car. I don't know if you want to be a passenger princess or not, baby. But I want to show you a thing or two about this, where I come from. And no, it's not the slums. I come from the old private school area. <laughs> now, this survivor, I want, her, I, I want her to chain me down and talk to me about how miserable her life is. I, I, I would marry her in a second. Like, that... That survivor's perfect. I hope she has an alternate skin with black hair. And I will mate her forever. She, uh, this survivor, I am madly in love with the survivor. Her name is Sable Ward. And she is a perfect 24 years old. And she's very petite. I actually don't know how old she is, but that's my headcanon. She's 24 years old. And she's a goth alternative, uh, big tit goth girlfriend. I don't actually don't, don't think she's got big tits either. But she's that little small petite girl. She got the hair flowing. She probably got a few piercings. Let you know she's kind of a baddie. She's a little baddie. Survivor. How you doing, baby? You want to come on, you want to get hung up on this hook for a little bit? 
yeah, that's where we are with her. So the killer, little, little contrast between the killer and the survivor. It, like, they know what the killer, know what this looks like? This looks like a prom couple. This looks like the prom couple where the girl's fucking way too good for the fucking guy she's with, and this is the guy she's with. That's what she looks like. The, the, this is the girl you like in high school. This is the guy she turns you down for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh god i i can't i can't enough i'm sure y'all are, are done listening to me uh swoon over the survivor and dunk on the killer you just want to get to the shit you're here for which is the what, what you want to hear you're here for the nitty-gritty right you want rosie to tell you what this shit is all right don't you worry i got you covered hold on it's getting hot in my car let me take off my sweatshirt real quick so let rosie tell you what's going on here bro What's going on here is the same shit that's always going on here. You're getting absolutely nothing. You're getting garbage perks, and you're getting garbage survivor perks this time around, too. Now, technically, the killer's perks aren't as atrocious as some of the other ones have been. Like, all these perks, like, a lot of these perks are better than the Chucky ones. The Chucky ones were worthless. Uh, the alien ones, besides Ultimate Weapon, were worthless. Lots of worthless. This is some worthless shit here on both sides. Uh, the killer actually looks interesting, but they always look interesting when they drop. It's hard to see what kind of counterplay is going to develop. I see what the killer's trying to do on paper, and we'll go over some of the nitty-gritty interactions here that the killer has, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's go ahead and get started. We will start with my waifu, Sable Ward. Uh, Sable figured she had to be adopted. No way was she the progeny of her insanely perky mom and her grinning golf-playing frat boy of a dad. They didn't understand. They didn't know the first thing about her. They didn't understand the first thing about her. No one in Greenville did. Oh, baby, please tell me everything that's wrong with your life. Oh, look at that heart on her fucking neck. Oh, she's got me by the heart, baby. Come on. Sable Ward. I I'm going to be playing some Survivor a little bit when the patch drops. I don't know about anybody else. No one except for Michaela, of course. They were best friends. They were, no, I'm sorry. They were fast friends up until third grade. Up until then, Sable had no friends. She wasn't into ponies or dolls or tea parties with teddy bears. She liked bugs, lizards, riding bikes, and dirt clawed fights. Her favorite holiday was Halloween. Oh, oh, so different. And Michaela was the only one who didn't think she was crazy when she dyed her hair purple in eighth grade. <laughs> oh, Cheryl. Oh, my God. These first world problems. I love it. I love it. Oh, she's so fucking toxic. Uh, anyway. Invocation. Weaving spiders. Here's the first part. When in the basement near the circle, press the ability button one to begin the invocation. Y'all probably be like, what? So this is a new perk for the survivors. They go down into the basement and they start a ritual. They start live action role playing fucking fucking summoning Yog Sothoth to the fucking game. Invocations take 120 seconds. Other survivors will see your aura during this and can join an ongoing interaction, increasing the speed by 50% each. And if they have an invocation perk equipped, they increase it by 100% instead. So basically, if you and your little live action role play Swift go all go down into the basement and start your satanic rituals, you can speed it up by 100% for everybody that has an Invocation Weaving Spiders perk. If not, it takes two minutes and it's not viable trash. So you have to do this in a group if you want to actually even see the effect and not lose the game. Because realistically, if you go AFK in the basement for two minutes against the fucking Hillbilly, who was a fucking rocket now. If you go up, if you give Hillbilly a head start on the and for two minutes, uh, he's going to win the game at that time. No, no joke. And then, if, you, if you're running barbecue chili, I know I don't run barbecue, but I know barbecue can still be a, a perk for, mid, for like low to mid-level players. And, so like, if you somebody has barbecue chili, they see your bitch ass in the basement live-action role-playing with Michaela, with Michaela, they're gonna think you're fucking retarded and come down there and kill you. Right? But anyway, 50%... Well, 100% is if they have the perk. So if they have it 100%, they can speed it up by... So two people takes it down to a minute. Three people takes it down to 30 seconds. All four survivors takes it down to 15. So if you're doing a four-man survive with friends, that's, that's what... Assuming that those stack, right? That's what that is. 50% don't think I love y'all enough to do that math. I, I don't know. 50%, my guess it would be 30, right? Instead of 60. So it would be 90... And then 30% of 90 would maybe have about 15. So 90 to like 65. And then like maybe maybe 45 for people who don't have the perk. Right? 
So, so basically, you're doing this huge voodoo, Chucky, Ade Dewey, Dembella, give me the power, I beg of you. So you're sitting there going, yeah, this is trash. What does this have to do with the Gen Rush? Oh, here it comes. So once the invocation is completed, you become injured and gain the broken status effect for the rest of the trial. Yuck! A downside on top of a two-minute activation condition. Yuck! And then you be and then all remaining gens gain 15 charges instantly. So there it is. There's the kicker. 15 charges out of 90 charges. So basically, if the killer's being a three gen hog and cocksucker, y'all can go to the basement and start your ritual chant in like the mid late game, or you could just do it early and, and theoretically get the most value possible, to where you get the most charges procked on on the gen. I don't know. This seems like a fucking meme. And then the downside, the, the downside especially makes it so you don't want to do it in the early game. Because if you do it in the early game and y'all forward broken the rest of the trial, I guess maybe you could cancel, theoretically cancel it at the very end and only one person would get the broken status effect. Like, if you could leave the fucking voodoo doll, voodoo doo-doo bullshit and leave it, then maybe only one person could get the, bro the broken status effect, which would minimize the swift, or you could just break it with no either. <laughs> right? But, but, but basically, all that... Now, again, so Swift could go down there and do it in 15 seconds if they're all running the perk, and, and it was actually an interesting way to fill up 15 charges. It feels like it could be, like, weird and gimmicky if you're on a team. In solo queue, this is going to be fucking unusable. Okay? I wouldn't worry about this too much. If it gets a buff, maybe keep an eye on it for Swift. I feel like Swift is going to be the people that use it, but, like, Swift's laughing at this, bro. Like, again, the, the Swift can do whatever Swift wants to do. And can you use this more than once per game? Like, can can somebody... Like, if you're doing the invocation, in my mind, you would have to not be able to cancel it, right? I don't know how the... If somebody clarify that for me in, in the comments section, I haven't seen a survivor try to jerk their dick off and do this yet. But, like, can you cancel the interaction once it's started? If you can, what happens? Does the person... Like, what if two people get off it? Does it just slow the timer down? What if you, what if you leave and then come back? Then what happens? In my mind, they would have to start over. I don't know. This is weird. This is weird. They probably should have just gave her a boon and not bothered with something like this. It looks really weird and fucking trash. But <laughs> it looks looks weird and trash. But again, survivors don't need... Uh, survivors meta has pretty much reached the tippy top. They don't really need anything else to beat you. Strength and Shadows. When in the basement, the perk activates. You lock the Strength and Shadows ability, which allows you to heal yourself at med kit at 60% of normal healing speed. And when you finish the heal in the basement, you see the killers work for 10 seconds. They gave her they, they gave her self-care in the basement. It's not good. It's not good, bro. Wicked. Ugh, wicked. Oh, she's so wicked. I love her. The perk starts with one token, maximum of five. For each token, you recover from the mangled status back 20% faster. For each 15 seconds you spend in the basement, you gain a token. So it's another counter to a uh, mangled. But apparently, this perk is like working differently or something. I don't know. So keep an eye on that one. They said it might do something a little different than it reads when it comes to main game. So that's her. The survivors got trashed this time around. The, very bad. You're definitely going to buy the survivor because you're going to purchase the only fan subscription for the cosplayer that's playing as her. Well, on the next, on the, well, you know, all those Dead by Daylight cosplayers, they fucking, like, th like, if somebody cosplays her, they might be worth a $4.30 day subscription. You know what I'm saying? You might be able to get some good screenshots and get a few, uh, have a few, uh, masturbation sessions going there. But other than that, trash. Nothing, nothing good about the survivor. Let's turn our attention to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> look at him, bro. <laughs> He's like an unknown from Pokemon, bro. Unknown. Look at that, bro. Come on, guys. Daddy, daddy, hurry. I saw something scurry. Is that all on your screen? Can you see what I'm doing right now? Oh, there's that one? Huh, weird. Uh, can I go back? what I just do? Adjust. No. Stop it. Okay, I fixed it. So that's there. There's the new killer again. Looks <laughs> so bad. So let's read these perks, bro. Unbound. Perk activates for 30 seconds after a survivor becomes injured by any means. You after vaulting, yuck. You gain a five percent haste for 10 seconds. 
it's, it's same thing I'm gonna tell you about fucking the the fucking the alien perk that everyone said was gonna be good. It's for ten seconds, guys. Five percent haste for ten seconds on killer is not good. Uh, what's that fucking shit called? Ugh, the alien perk. You all know what I'm talking about. I mean, I don't run it because it's trash. It's ult- It's the one I can't remember. Ultimate wep- Ultimate weapon's the good one, and then uh, lethal. No, it's not lethal pursuer. That's the early game one. The one. I don't know what that fucking perk is called. I can't for the life of me remember. <laughs> yeah, it's, that shit's the, 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 the trash one. The one that gives you 5% haste and everyone said it was going to be good. I don't even remember what it's called because it's so unmemorable. Yeah, this is so. This is just as bad. 10% after a vault. What, so you can make up a little bit of the vault? So you can get the pallet drown faster? Just one bamboozle, bro. Trash. Unforeseen. When you perform the break action on a generator, yuck, one of your regression events, you get 8 of these per gen. Your terror radius transfers to the gen for 30 seconds, and you set to 32 meters. You gain undetectable for that duration. Dark Devotion on gen. I like Dark Devotion. It's one of my favorite perks in the game. Uh, I, it's not going to be meta, but it'll be cute. It's a more consistent option to get 30% of under, uh, 30% under, 30 seconds of undetectable. So, that should be cute. That's a good, that's probably the best perk of the chapter on both sides, unforeseen. The last perk, uh, don't be fooled. Don't get so don't get too excited when I read this to you. When the survivor misses a healing or repair skill check, gain three tokens, up to thirty tokens. When you perform a break action on a gen, if you have any tokens, consume all of them. For each token consumed, the gen loses one percent of progress, and then it becomes blocked for one second. Then once the generator is uh, um, um, blocked, it starts regressing. Perk goes on cooldown for sixty seconds. Don't get too excited, bro. Don't get too excited. This perk is trash. Don't get too excited. This is a bad perk. It's not as bad as the first one, but is this is still bad. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, missing a repair or healing skill check. Yuck. It relies on something that they do. Not not even something that they do right, something they do wrong, so even worse. What, you're going to run some gimmicky build where you got Doctor, and you're going to run Huntress Lullaby. Oh, wait, they nerfed that. They nerfed, they nerfed impossible skill check dog. You're gonna run unnerving presence. Yeah! You're gonna run unnerving presence with undone to do, get make them miss skill checks, maybe if they're bad, so you can go delete 6% off an extra percent off of a generator, bro. Trash. I don't know if you guys know this, but Scorch Hook Pain Rezo and Pop Goes the Weasel are in the game, so there's no reason to run this. Especially since if you want to apply your Pop Goes the Weasel, you're going to have to burn tokens of Undone even if you have any. You can't decide when you spend the tokens. If you want to pop something... Now, granted, if you were going to pop something that's big, you probably could want your Undone to uh, go into that as well. And if you pop something with 30 tokens of Undone, you can take off 65... What? 65% of a gen? With one kick? Is that right? Pop goes up to 35 with the with with the percentage of the base and then an extra 30%. You can theoretically take off 65% of a gem with one kick. But they have to miss skill checks and you have to not be kicking. Then you have to not be kicking. What are you doing to run that? Hex ruin? <laughs> yeah, terrible. This perk is bad. Don't be fooled. Cute effect? If if it was if it was a hook, hook gain five. Hook gain five, I'd like that a lot a little bit better. Or, or, or I was thinking, hook gain five, when a survivor, uh, whenever a gen is completed, or they perform a heal action, instead of missing it, when they complete it, then you gain the tokens. Right? When they do something right, versus when they do something wrong. Now, again, I don't like that, but, but I, it's still not great to where, like, if the, the, the generator one, but it still wouldn't be good, because you only have five tokens for one uh, completed gen. But if you gave them, like, three tokens for a completed heal, you could use that. Spread injures with Ghost Base and Wraith, watch them heal them all off, and then get extra gen. Extra gens, right? But to, the only thing I'm leaving out is you can theoretically interrupt them, but it's like, how, you're not, how are you going to consistently get to 30 tokens or, or even 15 tokens going up and interrupting those actions? Especially in the camping tunneling meta. With the tunneling's meta again, right? Especially in this tunneling meta we're in right now, because gens or gen slowdown isn't the best anymore, right? So, yeah, this perk is bad. Moving on. Here is the power. 
Okay, and I'm going to read this. I already read this, and then I watched footage. This is the second time I'm going to read it after I watch the footage, okay? So here's what you do. It's called UVX, okay? And so let me read this to you first, and then I'll translate it. Press the power button to charge UVX. Once ready, press the attack button to launch UVX, a bouncing projectile which creates a blast aura upon impact. Survivors become hindered if touched by a UVX while airborne. Survivors touching the blast area become weakened. Weakened survivors lose health states if touched by blast areas. Uh, survivors lose weakened by successfully staring down the unknown, i.e. novelist identity 5. So if you stare at him, you lose the weakened status. Special ability hallucinations. The unknown will intermittently create hallucinations. Hallucinations cannot be created while charging UVX, performing interactions, or in proximity to map objects like hooks. Whenever survivors are touched by a blast area or otherwise become weakened, the next hallucination spawn time is decreased by 10 seconds. The unknown can teleport to hallucinations, leaving behind a temporary decoy. Survivors can remove hallucinations from the trial with the dispel ability. Weakened survivors take longer to dispel. If dispel is not completed, survivors become weakened and trigger killer instinct. So there you go. I guess maybe it has some skill checks on it, and if they miss it, then you'll get a killer instinct. Okay, so did you get all that? You want me to translate that for you? Okay, so here's what the killer does. So let's, let's read the first part again. Press the power button to charge UVX. You press the power button, the killer's penis comes out. I'm not, I'm not making a joke either. You will see it. The killer's fucking weird, disease-ridden penis comes out, and it starts, it gets like tentacles and little arms come out of it. So he holds his dick in his hand, okay, and then he fires semen at you. That's what he does. I'm not making this up. He fires cum at you, and then the cum, he fires a fucking cum shot. Okay, like he's fucking Ron Jeremy. And the thing, the little cum ball comes out. It's fucking purple as disease ridden as the dick is. And then the cum ball explodes. Okay, if you touch the cum ball while it's in the air before it explodes, you get hindered. My guess is 5-10%. Uh, and if when the cum ball comes down and blows up, if you were in the cum ball, you become weakened. Okay, because there's jizz on you. Okay, so if the killer fires another cum shot at you and the cum ball explodes on you while you are injured, like while you are weakened, then you take damage. Comprende? And then the only way to remove the cum stain is to look at the killer's face and then the cum dries up. Right? So that's the translation there. It's kind of so the killer shoots come at you. If the come hits you, you become weakened. Basically, he's got to hit you twice, kind of like i.e. Nemesis. He's kind of like people be saying he's trash hilarity 2.0 a little bit, kind of sort of, kind of like Nemesis or trash hilarity where you got to hit him twice. It's more like Nemesis than trash hilarity because Nemesis you have to hit them twice to do something to take the health state. That's what he has to do as well. Comprende? But they but so they have to look at you to to take your to come away, right? So. So you could theoretically come on somebody and then jerk off, no pun intended, right? You could piss off after you come on them, and then they can keep the weakened status effect for later. Like, you could bounce into one of your hallucinations and then keep them in the weakened state for them to have weaker dispels overall and to stay weakened for a majority of the time, correct? So that's what you do there. That's how you, it's like, a, he's got, he, he, he shoots shit. He's a projectile killer. He's 115. Hallucinations now. So basically... Uh, the unknown will intermittently also create hallucinations. They can't be created while charging the power and performing interactions to a map. So basically, he intermittently drops clones of himself on the map. This, these are actually cute. I have some video of this. We'll be able to watch everything. But he drops cum. He, he drops cum. He drops clones of himself on the map, which you can then teleport to. Uh, if, if, if the survivors are touched by the blast areas or become weakened, you can decrease the own hallucination spawn time. So you want to be basically cluttering up the map with these hallucinations. So basically you can add that extra chase and movement potential to you. You can add that extra 1v1 oomph and your extra 1v4 oomph to your game. That's what he's trying to do. So basically you want to cover as much of the map as you can so you can create as many of these hallucinations as you can all while jizzing on survivors. And knocking them down to slow the game down in hooks, etc. This is not a camping killer. Okay, he doesn't really want to be camping. Now, obviously, if you want to take the, the weak link out and tunnel them out, he can still tunnel. He has tunnel tech. We'll talk about what that is. 
But uh, so he can, he still can tunnel. It's just like the intended design for you is not to do that. But anyway. So that you can teleport you know, when you temporarily believe behind a decoy and survivors can get rid of the hallucinations if they dispel them. Okay? So that's the, that's the summary in a nutshell. Jizz, jizz, injure, walk, and then teleport in the mid to late game. Build up your hallucinations. Slow the gens down through normal downs and pressure with your chase organically. Organically set up hallucinations to have extra oomph to, both, uh, all, to all aspects of your game in the mid to late game. That's what he wants to do. He looks kind of mid, to be honest. But again, mid doesn't mean trash. Uh, I feel like I feel like I say these all these dealers killers look mid. I honestly, I, I feel, and I feel that way because like all the killers that were actually good, i.e. Chucky, I didn't make a thing on. If I made a thing on Chucky, I would have said he looks really good because Chucky is really good. And I'm Wesker, I skipped. And that so so Skull Merchant we didn't like, but Skull Merchant was strong, and Knight was okay, ended up being okay. So, again, don't write this off. It could be all right. So I think he's going to be better than, like, a Bitch Boy or a Myers or Pig or Trapper. Like, he's certainly not trash. So let's go into it. Let's take, let's take a look. Oh, here are the add-ons. Excuse me. My bad. Sketch attempt. Survivors hit by a cum blast area suffer from oblivious 20 seconds. Not, not great. Rabbit split. And that's a Myers add-on. Blood pools appear bright red when charging your cum. Survivors injured by your cum suffer hemorrhage 30 seconds. Not great. Survivors who are both weakened and injured suffer from the deep wound status effect when they dispel a hallucination. So if they, if they are weakened and injured, then they get deep wounds when they dispel. Not great. Blurry photo. After teleporting, regain full movement speed 50% faster. That might be one to keep an eye on. Blurry photo is the best one so far. Victim's map. When a survivor successfully stares down the unknown, you gain killer instinct for three seconds. So you got ghost space, you get killer instinct on the guy who reveals you. Not great. Slashed backpack. UVX triggers the cum area upon contact with hallucinations. So basically, hallucinations can't be destroyed by UVX. Doing so decreases the time till the next hallucination spawns by 75%. So you can so you can blow up your own so you can come on yourself. And so I, and then decrease the next time. That might be cool because it might let you more consistently place the guys where you want them. You could blow up the ones you don't want to place ones you do want. That might be all right. Notebook of theories: Survivors hit by your cum while it's airborne suffer from the hindered status effect for five seconds. I thought it, that's what it did base, but never mind. Last known recording: Decreases your hallucinations or range that is visible to survivors by twenty five percent, so they can see your your guys. And then go get rid of them. But that, and that decreases the amount that they can see. Them. That's not going to be that good. Device of undisclosed origin. Survivors entering the aura range of hallucination suffer from the oblivious status effect. Nah, not great. Man, you could do some plays with that. As you build up more shit around the map, that means more oblivious for you. Which means your potential to uh, sneak up on somebody is a little bigger. But at that point, it feels like you're going to be winning already when you have like eight hallucinations on the map. I don't know how many can even spawn in. But when you have a lot of hallucinations, you're probably winning already. So I feel like that's a win more add-on. Vanishing box. Survivors who complete gens become, be, become weakened against UVX. If you complete a gen, you become weakened. That might be okay. That one might be good. Because it allows you to get a passive weaken on somebody. And you come up to them, they're already weakened, so you can shoot your jizz at them. And then injure them. That might be good. Vanishing box. I did that one twice. Hypno hyp hypnotist watch. Survivors hit by your cum while it's airborne suffer from exhausted for 10 seconds. Not great. Front page article. Performing a break action on a pallet or a breakable ball decreases the next time. That might be cute. Because again, if you get more, a little bit more control about whether you're placing these guys, like if you can maximize, like if you use this and then you like, okay, I know in about 10 seconks I'm going to drop a dick. I'm going to drop a deuce, if you will. I can go over where I want it and then drop the damn thing. So that might be cute. But also it doesn't seem very consistent. Because like if you already have it 75% done and then you break it, like again, so that might not be very consistent. Might not, might, that might be too finicky to even work with. Footprint cast. Decrease of the time until the next hallucination spawns by 15 per seconds when a survivor becomes weakened. Okay, but doesn't your base kit already do that? Let me check that again. Doesn't your base kit already do that? If your base kit already does that, that might not be that good. Yes, it's otherwise become weakened. The next hallucination spawn decreases by 10 seconds. So it adds an extra 5 seconds. It adds an extra five seconds to when it would spawn in. That's what it does. It's this one, right? No, it's this one. 
It's an, it adds fifty. It adds an extra five seconds. So that's not that good. B movie poster. Survivors damaged by your comm suffer from the broken status effect for thirty seconds. That might be okay. Uh, you wish that said. You really wish that said sixty. If that said 60, you'd be in business, but that's not, again, I don't know how you buffed a lot of, you remember when you buffed Force Pendants because you said 40 was, you, you couldn't get usage out of 40 seconds? So why are you making add-ons that are still like this and terrible? I don't understand. Semen Vile. Survivors within the hallucinations or range suffer from exhausted for 10 seconds. Again, that's probably a win more add-on. It's not very good. Uh, NES Godzilla. Triggers for 20 seconds following a teleport. Increases the action speed for breaking down pallets breakable. That might be okay. You get 20 seconds of brutal strength after a teleportation. Again, still, again, but still might be a little bit more because of the hallucinations being, like, it, having a lot of them and having consistent good options to teleport to. Might be a little bit win morning, but also could not. That's still one of your better ones. Homemade mask. Survivors who dispel hallucinations suffer from blindness, trash, who cares? Discarded milk carton doubles your cum's projectile bounce strength. That might be cute. Iridescent OS report decreases teleport cooldown by 5 seconds. Decoy left behind takes 10 seconds longer to disappear. When created, the decoy has the same terror radius and red stain as the unknown. Finally, an iridescent that doesn't have any downsides. It's all positives. I, I, I just change a little bit, change, changing how he plays a little bit, but finally, a fucking iridescent that's all positives. Might be all right. And captured by the dark, survivors begin the trial weakened and decreases the maximum number of hallucinations that can be spawned by one. You don't really... That might be okay because they do get, you do get every everybody at the start of the trial can be cummed on for an injured state. But also, it, if, if it's, if it's kind of easy... Because again, the, the downside of that is it looks easy to remove being weakened. Like the killer's window to actually come on you a second time is kind of tight. So it looks easy to get that window. So that might not be worth it. And so those are the add-ons. Let's watch a little bit of footage and then I'll get the hell out of here. And you guys can go watch the PTB. Got true, of course. Check it out. Shazam. There's the penis. There's the cuff. See? Injured. That's not an injured. That's not an injured. My bad. <laughs> true sucks. How the feeling? <laughs> That's it. So let's watch that again. So, that is, what, see how they're jizzed on? You take your dick out, and you shoot your jizz. That's weakened. He's weakened right there. He's got a little bit of hindered there, and he's weakened. I don't think M2, 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 M2 is going to be viable. I think you need a basic attack in there somewhere. You need a basic attack in there somewhere. There's the teleport to a hallucination. His teleport That's much is solid. faster than Dredge. Much faster than Dredge. Like, they... look, look. Dredge has to wait through that entire animation. He just shows up. His teleport's solid. I think yeah. so the teleport's the teleport's gonna be alright. That looks pretty good. It looks fast and efficient. And well, there's some applications there you'll see in a second. There's there we the go, penis. let's test here. There you go. Okay, well, that's not really the best Take the hit. Time. She's still Wait, injured, so you have a window to, to take know, your dick out again. again. I thought she's supposed to go into See? broken. Or is it only when she's already injured? Point. Like, he still has, like, his first game. So, like, he has a window right here to take his dick or out or and shoot the other Or is it only when she's already injured? He does. You could also use this for zoning, which we'll see right now. We won't be able to do anything about this, right? Because it's the, uh, it's just a safe loop. Oh, wait. No, that's a hallucination. That's a hallucination for Chase right there. The right. tap's going around the, the jungle uh, gym tile. I'll get the tap looking loop. good. It might even be a lot. But boom, teleport to the chase. Mm. Teleport to the hallucination. Get him to the chase. There you go. So because he... That's the basic attack. There we go, I hit her. So she's a- She's hindered, but she didn't get weakened. She she she, she got hit by the cum stain as, as it was flying through the air, so she got hindered, but not weakened. That makes sense? Apparently hindered. You can hinder them without weakening This is a good spot. <gasps> Here's the Mori. Check this out. There you go, that's a crawling. Next. This killer is a fucking pervert. I can tell. 
Doesn't he just look like somebody that would like uh, try to grape your daughter? Why's the old pink? Here's a long shot. Boom. Long shot. Yeah, I'm not it. sure. And then he could have tried to teleport play there. Look. See how. See how he has a hallucination there? If the yeah, bot had sure. turned left and went to the. Like, if the bot had went in there, he could have teleported Wait, to the Wait, is he hindered now? Dude, that's so weird. But again, if he, if he takes his dick out and shoots his cum at him right there, he loses a health state. Ooh, how to change here's, the. Here's Coconut place RTS. Where the apparitions do spawn there. Wait. Maybe. There you go. Oh my god. Kind of a quick down kind of a quick down on two survivors there, which again I'm sure they're like bots. I'm sure they're either bots or trash. But like that's that's how you can kind of get one down, use your apparition to get to another one, get a get a quick combo play there. This this tech right here is very important. Here's your tunneling Ooh, stuff. How to change the, the when they're on a hook, look, when when they're doing a hook interaction, you can get your but you can get your dick out and shoot at them. Boom. Both of them are now weakened. Coming off the tunnel. And then you can either... Boom. Smack her. She's still weakened. Now you can go forward with your dick and get the tunnel, right? Obviously, Coconut RTS is a pleb and the nice of survivors and doesn't do that. But there it is. You can do that there. And then here's the killer instinct on the reveal. Oh. Got like a killer instinct there. Didn't complete the animation. Red, he reads the pallet there, weakens them. Now he's going to break, like, see that? That's that's the nemesis, nemesis shit uh, to him right there. But he, boom. Then he transfers to the different survivor, okay? He transfers to a different survivor there. So he, he, he kind of was on one guy. He was on one guy here. Watch. Watch it again. He was on one guy. Read the pallet drop. Boom. Jizzed on him. And then breaks the pallet. Okay, he did the flashbang or something, got away, instantly teleported over here. Eh, the other survivor's over there, but I can also bounce around over here, hit this person. So there's the kind of the 1v4 applications. Very basic level. Like, I'm sure that was a very easy play to just decide to do. The other survivor still had, like, the, still had kind of a jungle gem, and this one was outflanked. But that's kind of what you're going to be doing. That's the kind of applications of the hallucinations, where you're going to be able to bounce from one, chase one, bounce to, all the way across the map to a hallucination that you place. So you're rewarded for your map traversal, essentially. Last clip here. Just like... Boom. Look at that. Look how quickly. Look how quickly and efficiently he got there. Right? Look at that again. Hook. All the way there. Boom. Takes one, sec takes one second. Look how quick that was. That might just be the quickest teleportation in the game. Is it? That might just be the most quickest, most efficient way to get from one point to another point in the entire fucking game. And it's on this character, Base Kid. So, just some things to think about there. That's pretty much all I have to say right now. The rest of the chapter, we already covered. So, the, the, the other day. This is just about the, the new shit. So, I'm getting the hell out of here. I gotta go to the gym. And, uh, maybe we'll be on tonight. We'll see.